Thank you everyone for coming out. Um, please come on and find a seat. What I brought to share is uh, a little bit about the scale of TripAdvisor and the review culture. And then I'm going to talk about how you can leverage that for your business, where you can find free stuff on TripAdvisor. The good news is I have nothing to sell you. My clients are destinations. Uh, actual hotels and operations are not my thing. Um, just so I know, how many people in here are hoteliers or B&Bs or something like that, lodging? And then uh, restaurants, a couple, attractions, people that like to wave? Okay. Um, most of what I'm going to share is going to be based on the hotel side of things because that's our primary data source. But there are a number of things for restaurants and hotels, and, or restaurants and attractions, and I'll call those out as we get going. Um, so first thing, scale. TripAdvisor is big. And when I came to work for TripAdvisor, I didn't really understand how big I was talking. Um, we just pulled the numbers for last month, and of all the billions of websites on the planet, TripAdvisor is the 26th largest. 26, giant. Um, when we talk about this slide, I've had to update it again and again, and I apologize for standing in front of you guys. Um, the 375 million people are hitting the site each month. Our email list is about 84 million people. Um, 250 million reviews. And this number, when I started, we were very excited. It was 60 people per minute uploading content. Then we hit 100, and they gave us a coffee mug. Woo! By Q2, we're expected to be over 200. The review culture really is here. Everyone has embraced it. You know, and this is a function of the utility and ubiquitous, ubiquitousness of mobile. You have the sum knowledge of mankind in your pocket. Why wouldn't you reach into your pocket, pull it out, and try and get the best answer? Um, in addition to Trip being big on TripAdvisor, all these other sites are sites that license our content. One of my propositions to you is outside your own website, I would argue that TripAdvisor is critical to your business. We are your second most important website because we are representing your content around the globe. And when I talk about around the globe, right now we're in 47 countries, 27 la or 28 languages. Um, we just launched this last year a brand new uh, French Canadian site. Previously, if you were speaking French and looking at the Canadian site, you went to our .fr site. Now we have a .fr.ca site specifically for you guys. Um, we launched a, several new sites in LATAM domains. Our biggest area of growth, though, is the APAC region. Obviously, China's exploding for everyone's business, so that's a really big part. Um, in terms of traffic, the US and Europe kind of trade back and forth as to who's bigger. But the biggest growth we're seeing year over year, percent-wise, is coming out of the APAC region. But one of the main sh shifts that's just critical to everyone's business, and how many people, when you go to your website, have had to do this on your phone? or your tablet. Stop. You're killing yourself. This is the sound of people leaving your website and going to a competitor. You need to have a responsive website. It needs to serve content. And the reason for that is 50% of con uh, users are now using mobile devices. 50%. It is a giant part of your business. Please, stop with this. Um, my goal is when we finish this, you're excited and you think to yourself, I am going to go back and I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to invest some time. And you've got to go to your boss or your owner or your wife, and that all may be the same person. And you're going to make changes. What's your argument for that? The argument for that is this number, 11.2%. That's the amount you can make if you improve your rating from four bubbles to five. The people at <coughs> Cornell did a research study, and they determined that if a hotel was able to raise their rating one bubble, that's how much they could raise the price before, prices before they say, saw a drop in occupancy. 11% to your bottom line, one bubble. And I'm going to show you the tools to get there and make it easy. Um, are people using it? Yeah, half of people are reading reviews. And 80% of them are looking at 6 to 12 different reviews. Don't lose your mind over one bad review. 
No one reads reviews the way they did five or 10 years ago. You don't see a bad review and go, I'm never going to that place. When you see 10 bad reviews, you say you're never going to that place. People understand crazy. If it's made of unicorns and rainbows, we don't believe that. If it's the worst place on the planet, we don't believe that. What we're looking for as consumers is repeated trends. Don't lose your mind on one review. In terms of restaurants and attractions, 20% of people lead, uh, read 11 or more reviews. If you're an attraction, they are really drilling down. Time you're gonna spend on vacation is almost more important than where you sleep. People really like to read reviews for attractions. Um, in terms of global travel, 90% of people say they're booking them. Yay, a lot of people care about reviews, we knew that. Hoteliers have noticed it. 96% say it matters. So the review space is important. We're here because it matters. How can you leverage it? You can leverage it for more money. We're all here to make more money. First thing, if the prices are the same, people are almost four times more likely to book the place with more bubbles. Well, yeah. Do you want to stay in the place with three bubbles or the place with four bubbles when the price is the same? You're going to go for the better rated property. Simple. When prices are increased, hotels with the higher scores still get booked more. People will pay more to stay at a better place. 76% of people said they were willing to pay more for a better score. How much more? That's a, the number that floats. But most people understand that if you pay more, you get more. This is a way to leverage that if you're delivering great service. So what are they doing on the site? What are they looking at on TripAdvisor? The number one thing people are looking at is photos. How many people on your TripAdvisor listing have five photos? 10 photos? You all need to have more photos. No one has ever said, I'm not going there, they have too many photos. No one has said that. Lots of photos. Total number of reviews. When, when you're referring to that, are you referring to uh, owner photos or photos posted by? Yes. You can't have too many photos. You want to encourage your guests to do it. If they're not doing it, you need to get out there and do it. And in terms of photos, professional photos are great. They have a profound, important space in media. But you know what? What people care about is authenticity. If you have a family having a great time in your restaurant, you have a phone in your pocket, snap a photo. If you took people out for a day sailing and they had a great time, snap a photo, post it. It doesn't, the threshold for photography on the internet is it needs to be in focus. More photos, no one ever looks at a photo and says, that's a horrible photo, I'm now not going there. I mean, that's just not the way people look at it. They're gonna look at more photos. Um, total number of reviews. No one trusts the place that only has one review. That's shady. The number of responses in the past year. I wanna see that the management of the property, of the restaurant, of the tour, is engaged in the product. People wanna know you care about your business. Pretty straightforward. And the total number of reviews in the past year. It's great that you had 5,000 reviews five years ago. What have you done for me lately? What is happening recently? People understand the recency, so that's important. So how do you take control of this beast? Those are the starting points, but you absolutely can take control of this conversation. And I need to be very upfront about the fact that my company has built a platform that has allowed you people and the public to call your babies ugly. And I apologize for that. It is a very, very difficult thing. But this conversation has been happening since the dawn of time. When Grog did his first cave painting, the two other cavemen that were sitting there looked at it and said, that's just terrible, Grog. How could you paint those stick figures? What's different now is you can shape that conversation. You can participate in that conversation. And you can control it. Is everyone familiar with this page? Has anyone not seen this page? This is where you take ownership of your account. If you're not familiar with it, 
Make a note, this is what you need to go home and do. This is the first step to getting all the free goodies, starting here. How it works is you go to this URL, you search your property, you sign up. It's free, takes about 10 minutes. Do not use that fancy sign up with Facebook button. That connects your personal Facebook account to your business. Not gonna make your life easy. Um, when you use, and it asks you to submit an email. Don't let your junior intern who's super web savvy, who has the email CanadianQD27, sign up. It should be a generic property specific email, info at hotel X. Sign up, they will ask for a credit card, that's so we know who you are. It doesn't cost anything, it doesn't get charged, it's just so that we have a track back basically. But that's the first process, just sign up, really easy. Now you gotta embrace the feedback, this is a harder challenge. This conversation's happening, how can you shape it? One thing to know is if you've just signed up, the initial reviews are gonna be negative. They're gonna skew negative. This does not mean your product is poor or not performing. This is a function of a vacuum of expectations. If you are a property in Charlottetown and you say you have the most amazing customer service and world-class hotel and best hotel on the planet, I will come and stay with you and I will be disappointed when my morning coffee is not delivered by a supermodel riding a unicorn carrying a rainbow. <laughs> Once I realize that that's not expected and you are a mid-priced hotel by the airport that offers free breakfast, the customer that is looking for that will come and you will start to deliver on that value expectation and you will score better. But initially it will skew a little bit negative. Don't let that discourage you. As the reviews start to trickle in, things get better and they get better really fast. The old story that when people have a negative experience, they tell a lot of people and when people have a positive experience, they don't tell anyone, not true. Most reviews are positive. Most reviews that are trusted are positive. The reason TripAdvisor works is people uncover gems, little treasures when they're traveling and they wanna share that. So that's what's happening in the space. People are gonna be positive. So keep that in mind as we move through this. Everyone wants to know about the popularity index. They wanna be the best hotel. I get that. Um, there's three things you can impact that improve your ratings. The first is the quality. You wanna meet the value expectation you're delivering. If you're that mid-priced hotel with breakfast, you need to serve a breakfast. You need to deliver on what you promise. Second thing is you need re reviews recently. Reviews yesterday matter more than reviews last month, last year. The algorithm, they matter less as you go back in time. And then you want a whole bunch of reviews. Great reviews yesterday and oodles of them. That's the secret to moving up in the popularity index. And we have some tools to help with that. The first tool is called Review Express. This is, we launched it last year and it is awesome. I, I can't tell you how powerful this is. Um, in terms of an automated tool, just a little bit of effort will really reap huge rewards. It's basically a templated email that you can go in and customize. You upload the emails of your guests and we go and ask them to review you. Simple. And you're saying to yourself, but Andrew, we can do that. We can send out an email from us. If I say, do you like my sweater? You're gonna nod your head politely. If she asks you, you're gonna go, black sweater? That was so last year. Third party ask matters. When I check out of a property and the front desk gal says, hey, did you have a great experience? I say yes, regardless of my experience because I wanna leave, I wanna go, I don't wanna have that debate. This is a third party ask from an established source that has credibility. So you get more response. That's a big part of it. Um, it shows you care about out the feedback. That's big to guess. You can customize it, tune it, add your logo. Pretty simple. 
You get this cool dashboard that tells you how many you've sent out, how many are coming in, if you've responded. Total cost, zero, free. Simple, easy to use. It meets the Canadian castle laws, the spam thing. We don't go back and solicit your guests for anything ever. It's all straight up, once and done. A great tool. Um, this is a case study of a attraction, a brew tour that used it in uh, North Carolina. They were at the bottom of the popularity index for all the things to do. They spent 10 minutes a week to go from the bottom to the top. 10 minutes. 26th biggest website on the planet. They were at the bottom of the ranking, 10 minutes a week, top of the ranking. Really strong investment of time. Um, this now actually is over 50,000 people or businesses have used Review Express. You see typically about a 33% increase in your reviews. Some tips, email addresses are hard to collect. If you can, collect them electronically. I know this is a challenge for restaurants um, and some attractions, but if there's a way to do it, definitely collect them electronically. Send the reviews regularly. Don't let them sit and say, hey, I'm gonna do them after every other month or every six weeks. You wanna do it weekly because you want that steady stream of reviews coming in for the recency. So you wanna do it regularly. Try and reach them sooner rather than later. Had a great experience recently in uh, British Columbia. Stayed at a property. Checked out in the hotel room via the TV thing. As I'm walking to the elevator, I get an email. I'm waiting for the elevator. Oh, hey, look, they want me to review their property. I'm still on site. I had a great experience. I'm still basking in the glow that everything worked. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll write a quick review. Really simple. Um, earlier in the week, it gets better response. On the weekend, people are playing, they've got other things going on, they're less likely to complete these. Other ways to get more reviews. On your website, you can post a widget. If you don't know what a widget is, it's basically just a simple piece of code that you cookie cutter from our website, have your web guy paste on to your website. Doesn't impact the load times, it just gives you a third party ask within your own environment. Um, you can also have a Facebook feed uh, on your page. You can show your current rating. Has anyone here received the Certificate of Excellence? Congratulations. Um, these are the awards that come not from TripAdvisor, but from our users. Um, super powerful. You can capture the logo there from the Management Center, put it on your website. Again, third-party endorsement. You telling me you, you are great is nice. Someone else telling me you're great is believable. So now I've gotten you fired up. You believe in the idea that reviews are important. You're actually capturing more reviews. Let's venture into the conversation. Why do you want to do this? This number, really important, 77%. This is the number that represents if you respond to reviews, people will believe you care about your guest. As a manager, as an owner, what more could you care about? This is fundamental to your business. People need to understand you care. Show them, don't just say it. But more important than that number is this number, 87%. If you get a grumpy review and you reply appropriately, 87% of people will have a positive impression. 87% will think positively of your property after a grumpy review, if you don't lose your mind. Important caveat, respond appropriately. So let's talk about responding. Here's a typical uh, review, and I'm gonna go ahead and read it. Apologies for that. Um, Great stay, stayed downtown with friends and kids for the Disney on Ice show at the Target Center. Valet was very accommodating, prompt considering we had four small kids, a lot of luggage. We ate at your restaurant on the second night. It was very enjoyable. Quiet, kid-friendly, very good food, definitely come again. Stayed in March, five bubbles across the board. Very typical, you see these all over the place on TripAdvisor. This is the response. Anthony, general manager at the Hilton Garden Inn in Minneapolis said, Amy, we're so glad you enjoyed your experience with us at the Hilton Garden Inn. We hope the Disney show on ice was enjoyable as well. 
Thank you for the feedback about the hotel, specifically the promptness of our valet staff, the great restaurant experience. I hope the kids were able to play in the pool. I hope you come back and see us next time you come to Minneapolis. Anthony, general manager, Hilton Garden Inn. Anthony is a really smart cookie. He has done a number of subtle things in this review that make it really stand out, or this response. The first thing he did was he fessed up to who he is. I trust a response that has a name attached to it much more than owner, manager, person X at property. I want to know who's talking. Second thing, he wrote to Amy and he responded to Amy's review. On TripAdvisor, the reviews and the responses stack up vertically, and they're there forever. If you write a beautifully crafted response, you spend hours coming up with just the right verbiage, and then you copy and paste it underneath every review, I know how much you cared. Not at all. Don't paste. Respond to the review, that person's review. Um, everyone knows what a search engine spider is. Google goes out, crawls the internet, figures out what pages matter the most. If I were searching for a, pro a, hil a uh, hotel in Minneapolis, a Hilton in Minneapolis, a Hilton, Minneapolis, a Hilton in Minneapolis, this page is going to index very, very high. Because the search engine optimization is so good at TripAdvisor, there's a good chance it's going to optimize ahead of your own, their own property page. Do the math with me. This is important. If this was a negative review, this is not the place for Anthony to say, I'm so sorry you had a terrible experience at the Hilton Garden Inn. We will try and do better at the Hilton Garden Inn. <laughs> we never make mistakes at the Hilton Garden Inn. Don't go crazy, Google's really smart, but if you can organically do it, it absolutely will help you. Be smart about it, think about it. Next thing, everybody loves hardware. Fancy new kitchens, great new buses, a new boat, but your property is people. Your brand is people. When someone calls your people out, you should amplify that. You should recognize your staff. People respond to that. It is an emotional connection you can make with your guests that are coming and your guests that came. If someone calls out your staff, amplify that. Um, the next thing Anthony did that I think is brilliant is these reviews live forever. You're writing to two audiences. The first audience, Amy, the person who wrote the review, and the second audience, the rest of the planet. I'm coming in June. What am I going to do with my kids and my wife while I'm there in Minneapolis? Oh, there's a pool. I didn't know that. Now I do. He sold me without making it look like he was selling. If you have new stuff, cool stuff, it's OK to mention it. It's a stereotype, but I've been traveling in Canada for three years now, and it is 100% true. You are humble, humble people. Have some swag. Call it out when you have greatness. If you just got a brand new pool, if the golf course is new, say so. You're really excited about the new restaurant, the cool patio, say so. Tell me how awesome you are, because you are. Um, and then lastly, again, he fessed up to who he is. Really important. Easy things to do. This person is the voice of your brand. It doesn't have to be a single person. It can be lots of people. But that is the voice of your brand on the, on the platform. I would encourage you to make sure everyone who's responding speaks good English, has good spelling, has good grammar. People make assumptions right off the bat based on what they read. Let's take a look here at the Georgian before, house. Before you leave that for a moment, yep. where, where in the system does it allow you to put in that top line about Anthony L, general manager? Because whenever I've responded to reviews, 
I've just asked for who you are, co you know, owner, manager, something like that. I've never seen the name where where you could put in that. I believe in the owner center when you register up, right there during the registration so it will process. Automatically generate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I've never. And then if you pick manager, it'll come up with that name, right? Yes. I believe that's the case. I have not been in recently, but I believe that's the case. I would look in the initial part of the owner's center, and then I'd look at the pull-down menus. Um, if, you're, if you want, you can leave me a card, and I can check when I get back and get you a definitive answer. But yeah, I believe you can make that selection. Um, so the Georgian house. B&B, Glasgow, Scotland. Really typical, kind of middle-of-the-road property they got a, we'll say, grumpy review about a stay. And this was their response. Hundred percent true. If you go to a TripAdvisor, it's there. Um, again, the owner but their capital B budget, like, these things matter. The internet has no tone. We don't know if he wrote this, honestly, what do you expect? You pay a little, you get cheap. Or if he wrote it the way we all read it. If you're unsure when you're writing a response, let someone else in the office read it. Don't give them a bunch of caveats ahead of time. Just let them read your response. And if their eyebrow goes up a little, or they swallow deeply, think about going back and tuning it. Um, so when I saw this, I, I went, dug a little bit deeper, and sure enough, the, there was another grumpy review, and this was the other response he had. Um, again, people look for trends. <laughs> The interesting thing here was I went back and looked and December 30th was a Monday morning. If you haven't had your coffee and you had a bad day, now is not the time to tackle this. I understand it's hard to have people say something's not right. You would have loved to fix it before it happened, but you didn't know and now they're telling people after the fact. Um, it's tough. We'll talk about some ways to approach the negative review here. But things to remember are one bad review won't kill you. It's the series. Um, you don't need to get into an argument with people on the internet. There's Arguing on the internet is like wrestling a pig. You both get dirty, but the pig likes it. There's no win for you. Whatever they say is right in their minds. You are not going to get someone to say, oh, my bad, that was a delicious breakfast. You're not going to change their mind. Don't bother with it. You can correct things that are inaccurate. You can offer to do better. But changing someone's mind is almost impossible. So let's talk about best practices. You want to get notified of them. You don't want the review to sit there for a long time. If someone gives you a positive review and says, hey, that's a beautiful sweater, you don't just let that sit there. You say thank you. Conversely, if someone says something horrible, you want to address it. You want to show you're engaged in the product. In the management center, you can get notified. You don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to answer them, but you should respond. Um, the Starwood properties, their rule is 80-20, or 20-80, I should say. They want to reply to at least 20% of uh, positive reviews and 100% of negative reviews. I think the number to shoot for is 50% positive, 100% negative. And when I say 50%, that's just kind of a number I made up based on reading these. Um, it is something you can scale based on the review. If someone writes a really long five paragraph review, you need to respond more. If someone writes a short three sentence thing saying, hey, it was great property, really loved it, coming back, thank you. That's enough. 
scale it, scale your workload, be smart about it. Read the guidelines. If you corner me after the presentation and say, Andrew, I have this one review that is a little crazy. Can you help, help me take it down? I can't do that. I'm not that guy. Um, but the way to get something pulled down is to leverage our guidelines. If someone has violated a guideline in the management center, what you want to do is you want to copy the guideline, copy the offending part, and say, dear TripAdvisor, this guy violated your guidelines. See the guideline, see review, thank you, and we'll take it down. If it's a he said, she said, where you think they violated it, and we don't think so, it tends to stay up, and we let the public decide. Um, additionally, there are guidelines for you to respond. You want to make sure you stay within your guidelines, too, so that your responses get published. If that's for me, please take a message. Um, respond promptly. You want to let things, you don't want them to fester. You want to reply quickly. Say thank you. People have an emotional response to this. Thank you for coming today and taking time out of your day. It matters. A simple thank you carries weight. Be original. No cut and paste. Copy paste is the death of you caring. Be original. Highlight the positives. You can amplify the positives. Even the most negative reviews tend to have some positive in them. Restate that. Make it bigger. Make it better. Remind people of that. Address specific complaints. If someone is sure that the blue room wasn't blue enough, I'm really sorry that the blue room wasn't blue enough. We're changing to a yellow room next season. We're going to make it very yellow. Thank you for the suggestion. Come back and try it. Address them, wrap it in some kind of positive, and move forward. Be polite and professional. Avoid the tips from Glasgow. That is not the voice you want for your company. Um, we have a tool now called questions and answers. This is uh, different from a review in that this is an exchange you would have with a potential guest prior to them coming to the property. You get notified of these in the management center, same way you do reviews, but it's an opportunity for potential guests to ask questions and you to reply on the front end. Really powerful. Again, shows you care. It's timely. Manages the expectations. The key to great bubble ratings is managing the expectations. You get notified, and it's towards the bottom on the page. So you're now replying, you're getting people fired up, you're collecting the reviews, things are going well. What's the next step? Next step is painting your picture. I talked about having more photos. 73% of people are deciding based on your photos. You don't have enough. No one does. You're not special. No one has enough photos. More photos. You've got a phone in your pocket. Take it out. It's really easy to upload. Genuine photos, recent photos, timestamp photos. If people outside are wearing jackets and there's snow and your photos are of summer, that's not relevant. Be relevant. Show photos of all seasons. Um, additionally, video. Oh, I don't have my phone. Hold on. Video is great. It's even better than photos. But it's tricky. The secret to taking pro video, watch carefully, this is quick. I'll do it again. <laughs> now here's my big tip for advanced people. Go from something to something. Not with crazy shaky hands. From something to something. It doesn't have to be long. It can be as simple as front of hotel to smiling guest or smiling guest to front of hotel. Short videos people will watch. And it's an easy thing to do. Um, for attractions and restaurants, this is really important. Most people's listing on TripAdvisor didn't come from you uploading it. 
some consumer stayed with you, went on the trip, and uploaded the content. The likelihood that they got your phone number, your email, your hours correct is low. You need to get in and update that. The reason for that is TripAdvisor on the mobile app now that most people are using and on the uh, mobile web, it has push to call functionality. If I hit the push to call button and it doesn't ring through, I am not going to Google to track you down. I'm going to your competitor and booking with them. You want to make sure that stuff's correct and up to date. For hotels, the hotel amenities, really important. You want to make sure it's updated. The fastest way to a horrible experience is promise me something and not deliver it. I was staying at a property and they charged me $12 for Wi-Fi. I said, the Wi-Fi is free. She said, no, it's $12. I said, no, it says it's free. It's $12. No, it's free. And the bubble score is just plummeting as I'm having this conversation. Don't promise me stuff that you're not going to deliver. The other reason this is really important is consumers actually don't care about the best hotel. They care about the best hotel for them. And what I mean is we have a new tool called Just For You. I don't care about the best hotel in Charlottetown. I can't stay at the best hotel. I travel for work, I have a per diem. It needs to be in a set price range. I don't care about a gym, I'm too lazy to go. I don't care about the romance package, I'm staying by myself. I care about free Wi-Fi, and my boss doesn't like it when I pay for parking. These are the things I care about. TripAdvisor, because I use it often, knows that. It serves me the best hotel that meets my criteria. Where we pull that from is the amenities. So you want to make sure your amenities are matched up with what you're delivering, that you're located in the right place, that you're telling people about everything you're actually offering, because that's how people are going to find you. On the mobile device, screen real estate is very, very expensive. It's hard to come by, so people use filters. They don't look for the best restaurant. They look for the best Thai restaurant within 500 yards because they're walking out of the hotel. They're filtering, and the same with hotels. So you want to make sure that stuff's all current so we get the right filters. Singing your praises. So in terms of swag and bragging, like you need to have that, and you can. If you've gotten an award for great, excellent service, tell people. Most people don't understand what great service feels like. They have this vague notion in their head of what great is, but they don't really know. I'm a really avid scuba diver, and one thing that happens often when you're out diving is you come up from a dive, and the person next to you is like, well, what'd you think? And you're like, oh, it was pretty good. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I saw a red fish, I saw a blue fish, you know. Yeah. And then the guide, the expert, the pro, comes up, and he looks at everybody and he says, did you have a great time? It was the most amazing dive ever. Did you see the red fish and the blue fish? Amazing. That person now is put in the position of trying to decide and reevaluate their expectation. The expert said it was amazing. Is he wrong or did I just not understand what amazing was? If you have this or any award on your counter and then you deliver really good service, people will go, oh, it's great service. The experts say so. The catch to this is you need to deliver. If you say you're great and you don't deliver, it's a longer, more painful fall. But most people who are in the business and continue to be in the business are delivering good product. We know that. If you're great, say so. Say so in lots of places. If you get an award, reach out to your local DMO. Issue a press release. Tell everyone. The more people you tell, the better it is. Don't be humble. Brag. This property fired off an Instagram photo of their award. Very impressive. Total cost, free. I said, that was really smart. He said, wait till next week. I'm like, all right. Next week, he had the whole staff standing out in front holding the award. 
We want to recognize our staff's hard work. Oh, that's nice. Well done. He says, wait till next week. I'm like, come on, how are you going to top that? The next week he has each staff member holding the award in a solo shot. And he has them retweet it and post it on their feeds. Most people have 500 friends. How many staffers do you have? Multiply that by 500. Cost? Zero. Brag about it. Tell people you're great, let them expect greatness, and then deliver. You absolutely can do it. Um, incidentally, on these, I recommend if you get them consecutive years, it's very impactful to have 2013, 2014, 2015. If you get it in 2013 and it's 2015 and you haven't seen one since, I don't recommend having it out. Go ahead and pull it down. Coach your staff so they understand the big picture. Um, within the management center, you can get more stickers. You can get little things you staple to the folio, like uh, business cards that say, please review us on TripAdvisor. Easy way to get some additional reviews. You want to get the whole staff understanding that it matters to you. And when I say that, the staff is a powerful, powerful tool. If they understand getting reviews matter, the valet that's loading the car and the person says, hey, I had a great time, you were great, thank you so much. If they say, hey, thanks for telling me, but you know what, my boss really likes it when we get good reviews on TripAdvisor. Oh, sure, I'll hook you up, no problem. That's an easy thing to do. It's not appropriate necessarily to tip the girl behind the counter. But if she went out of her way for me, it's totally appropriate for me to give her some kudos on TripAdvisor. It's an easy thing to do. You need to let the staff know it matters. Additionally, if you get the customer who's not happy and is giving you an earful for whatever reason, this is not the time you need to mention TripAdvisor. Don't staple the little thing to their folio. Just Take their complaints seriously and move along. Game the system a little bit. Um, these are important links, and I'll make a copy of this uh, deck available, but if you haven't signed up, you wanna sign up, this is the most important link. This is the starting place. This is our, our Twitter handle. If you enjoy Twitter, that's our business to business stuff. It's, we release stats, new product, other stuff that's going on there. And then the final one is the blog. Um, if you go home and you're like, wow, Andrew was brilliant, but I don't remember a thing he said. If you go here, 99% of my talk, all the meat, none of the good jokes are there. You can download a PDF that says, here's how you upload a photo. Here's how you upload a video. Here are the top 10 things to do. Here's how to respond to a negative review. It's all available there, really easy to access. So seven things that I'd love for you to do as you head home and are excited about this. If you haven't registered, please register your property. It's so simple. Include your uh, amenities, make sure they're up to date, make sure your contact information's up to date. We are driving business your way. If the phone numbers aren't right, we're driving it to nowhere. I would argue that no one is doing that in 45 countries for you but us. Make sure your phone numbers are right. Add a video and some photos. You can't have too many photos. You can't. More photos. Encourage reviews. Ask someone to give you a review. I'm not talking about your neighbor or your mom. Ask a guest who is happy to give you a review. Maybe they do it, maybe they don't. But once you learn to make the ask, it becomes easier and you will get more and more reviews. Get notified. Keep track of them. You can use this as a tool to craft your business. If as a hotelier, you get 10 reviews that say the carpet is old and you say, my carpet's not old, I just put that in in 1980. There's a good chance your carpet's old. Use this to help your business. Read between the lines, look for trends. If you see someone calling out your staff as being awesome all the time, they're doing something right. Go find out what it is. Write a response. Start with a positive one, it'll make you feel better. Say thank you. Amplify the positive message. Jump in there and have that conversation. Fess up to who you are. Add a widget. It's more advanced, you're probably gonna need to talk to your web person. 
but it will make your site more robust. You saying you are great is nice. Someone else saying you are great is impactful. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you all. Um, we've obviously got some time for some questions. Did you guys have anything that you were wondering about that uh, maybe I could answer? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I work with Tourism Summerside in our uh, visitor center. Uh, tour, uh, that's the DMO. Is this Summerside's a city? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm from Los Angeles. I have no oh, idea sorry. anything. <laughs> so, so the city Summerside. Gotcha. Um, Eric, uh, in our visitor center, just got TripAdvisor this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been getting really great reviews. However, recently we got a really bad review. Okay. But the individual is accusing a different visitor center under our page. Okay. Um, I responded and I thank you and said this is kind of out of the ordinary, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then did point out that they were refer referencing a different property. Okay. But, so, but I didn't really want to call out the property. So, anyways, so in the management center, one of the things you can do is you can say that this review, and I forget the exact verbiage, it's inappropriate, but you can say it's not us. And you absolutely want to do that. Um, TripAdvisor takes what we call content integrity really, really, really seriously. Our entire value proposition is built on the idea of people trust us. Having bad reviews that aren't for the right thing don't help us. So we spend a lot of time and energy trying to make that correct. Um, if you get someone that's threatening to write a grumpy review before they even say, you gotta give me a better rate, blah, 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 you can list that in the management center. If you get a disgruntled employee who's writing horrible things about you, you can list that in the management center. We won't always take it down, because we can't tell, we're not gonna do it's not CSI, we don't come out and do DNA. But we, we, we do try and get it right. Um, what I will tell you is the answer to pollution is dilution. If you get a bad review, go get a bunch more. Law of large numbers say they'll be positive, that negative one will be pushed down off the page and people won't see it. So definitely let them uh, notify us via the management center. Definitely reply to the guy and then take a deep breath and move on. That's my advice. When you were talking about flagging, like getting mm -hmm. yep. bad review, how do you flag it by, because we don't know our guest names? No, no, and, and part of the guideline is, you know, we don't want you sending Bob Smith, this is his home phone number, he's gonna like, <laughs> that creates a whole other set of issues. Um, just yeah, just explain as much as you can. Give us as much data as you can. Basically the way it works is, um, there's automated filters, and things funnel, 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 and if something trips along that path, it, gets, it ends up in a person's lap who looks at it. And if nothing trips, it goes up and gets published. That's how that works. But yeah, the more data you can provide, the more info, that's always great. Where in the management center is there a either contact information or link? Because I, on several occasions, I have had questions that I would like to speak with a speak real with, person. Yeah, <laughs> that's not going to happen. So why is that? Because frankly, it is so frustrating to I, not to be able to deal with you guys when when we've got a, a question about something that isn't related to a review. Nope. And, and that. So it is a hundred percent a valid criticism. Um, it is a giant weak point. Um, the reality is the scale of TripAdvisor, 45 countries, 28 languages, we're 2,900 people. But you seem, and to, have, it, but well, you seem so, to have lots of people who are, who are reviewing our management responses to determine whether or not they are appropriate and, and putting them up. So you seem to have so, bodies. So, so th those aren't as many people as you think. That, again, a giant portion of that is automated. But the criticism is valid. You want to talk to somebody. The reality is it's very, very difficult, even internally, to get to a person. Um, the best tools, I would say, is the Help Center is amazing. It is much stronger than most people realize. Um, additionally, there is a product called a business listing. You have to pay for the product. And I know this isn't a great answer. Um, 
but those you actually then have an account rep that deals with your particular business, yeah, exactly. and I'm you can. Not an accommodation, so, so the okay, so then you're then then, not, then you're then you're stuck. For, yeah. For me, and uh, and it's just because I'm I'm not an attraction. Okay. I I am an experience. What are you? Well, I, I, it's a company called Experience PEI. We provide experiential activities for people to do. So we don't quite fall within a lot of your descriptions, and and we found it. Challenging. And you're listed currently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and we found it challenging because we have multiple activities that mm -hmm. people can choose from. To try and get our activities listed, I have, and, and they're all they're all different, but they all follow the same sort of format. But for some reason, I frequently, I will try and, and get them listed, mm -hmm. and some will get accepted, and some, and some will get rejected. And, and in the rejection, it simply says, we don't meet your trip the criteria. criteria. So my question is, so where am I not meeting your criteria? Because I think I am, uh, but I... But you can't get anybody a trip advisor <laughs> to, to respond to that because you, it's a no reply sure. address. Yep. You send me my rejection, but I can't reply to Oh, you. it's by design. Um, <laughs> the, it's terrible business. I, I, I apologize. Um, I would say um, not really understanding the exact details of the way your business works. Um, it sounds like the activities should be listed individually as is this is a snowmobiling activity. <clears throat> this is a hot air ballooning thing. Um, I would look at the criteria for attractions very carefully, make sure you meet it, and then resubmit saying, I've met these criteria. And then if there's a, a field that's open, Paste in the stuff. Our company, so when I came to work for TripAdvisor three years ago, I tried to come in with a very open mind. And I said, I'm not going to believe all those things they say about dorks and engineers. No, they're true. They're 100% true. It, people are very pedantic. They are engineers. They, they look at the letter and the number, and that's what they live on. Um, so those kind of stumbling blocks I just dealt with a property in Fiji that couldn't be listed because they have multi-day excursions and we only do single-day excursions. They had single-day excursions, they just weren't listing them. So once we figured it out, they could get listed. It, and we're not good about that. So I would say, don't be discouraged. Look and see in the Help Center what exactly the criteria they're listing are. Um, the other thing I would say is I'm happy to give you a business card. You can send some stuff to me. I will try and fire it off to the right people. Um, but I'm not, to manage your expectations, I am in a satellite office and there is no phone number. I don't have a phone. It's not like the, hey, I'm at the water cooler. Hey, can you take, like, that's just not how it is. Um, but I'm happy to help you as best I can. Well, I don't want to finish there. Does anyone have a great <laughs> positive thing to say about TripAdvisor? Uh -huh. So I just want to kind of like let everyone in the room know that because um, when you renovate, you have the opportunity yeah. to request as your product gets older, like you, you tend to get a little bit more negative reviews, right, on your product. Once you renovate, you can request for those uh, surveys to go away or those reviews yep. to go away. And there's a process, uh, but obviously it works, it works quite well. So we're very happy with that. And along those lines, if you renovate, tell people. If you're going to renovate, tell people. We're coming to renovation season. We'll be renovating between June and July. You need to let people know, one, so when they show up and there's construction, they're not upset. Two, if they're reading their view and coming in August, they can be excited because it'll be done by then. Tell people. It's a giant thing. It's cool. Thank you. Um, is there anything else? Yep. Just um, what you're just saying about tell people and, and mm -hmm. tooting your own horn, um, it doesn't come naturally to me. <laughs> you're, you're a local. 
Pardon? You're a local. <laughs> um, my husband and I, we bought a, a bed and breakfast from, from Bill and Mary Kendra a year and a half ago. And so our trip advisor, we went right down to the bottom of the listing yeah. because we were, we were new owners. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, you know, all the reviews related to Bill and Mary didn't apply anymore. And so that was quite discouraging because <laughs> the reviews were very really good. But under, understandable. We've now gone from what 153, and we're now up in the, the high 20s. Nice. Is that something that we should certainly <laughs> to in our corner about on our Facebook page, or just saying thank you to all of our guests who have helped us achieve this new rating? And ratings um, can and, change and quickly. Put, yeah. But so put so. It out there as a thank you yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with telling people that you're paying attention to it and thanking them for doing it. That's a good thing. I would be hesitant to throw the number in there. Yeah. It's a little bit like the airline it's saying we've never had a crash. Really <laughs> um, I was uh, presenting in Niagara Falls. I did the same talk and I finished and the guy next after me came and he started presenting and the hotel had a power outage mid presentation room. Didn't have any windows, totally dark. It was so <laughs> awkward. And uh, the emergency lights come on and like you're just waiting and he's like trying to do shadow puppets. And um, I mistakenly said, huh, that's never happened to me. Um, last week when I was in Alberta presenting, I clicked the button for the slide and the entire second half of my presentation was gone. Um, I say this because Bragging to brag isn't the way to do it, but claim what you're good at. Show that you're passionate. That's totally legit. And, and, and people will respond to that. Authenticity is the rarest commodity in travel, and it is the most sought after. I want to have a genuine PEI experience. I want to eat real Mexican food. I want to go and see what the locals do. That's what people crave. When you show that, people respond. Mm -hmm. Yep. I just wanted to let, I mean, I know we're here with the supervisor. I just, I travel seasonally, like four to six months of the year, I'm off the island and then I'm here working. And when you go on anything like a go or Priceline or any of those sites, uh, Expedia, there's always a, you know, this is how we rate our accommodation or our attraction, and this is the user reviews. And I can just tell you, for somebody who's been traveling for 18 years, I never, go anywhere, stay anywhere, or do anything without taking that information and checking the reviews on TripAdvisor. Mm -hmm. And that's how I have my best experiences. Yeah, so. that, that, that's great to hear. I mean, it, it is... It's important, is what I'm saying. Yeah. As somebody who travels, it is extremely important. It, it, um, it, it is... Our business is meeting people's expectation. If you are the least expensive bed and breakfast on the island, there's a guy out there looking for that. If you are the most expensive, most romantic, there's a guy out there looking for that. Show who you are, show you're passionate about it, I will come find you. These are the things people care about. And I'm sure in your experience, like, there's something you're looking for. Yeah, I'm not always looking for the marble, you know, the gilded yeah. paper rolls and whatever, but I'm a, I'm a value, I want value. You want what you're looking for. And I can find it when I look at TripAdvisor and see the honesty, the integrity of the reviews. Yeah. And people are really good at reading reviews. Five years ago, people were not so good. People can smell crazy, we ignore it. <laughs> Don't stress about the crazy. Thank you guys very much. I'll be around if there's a question you want to corner me with privately. Do we have any housekeeping? Are we all good? Thank you guys very much. <laughs>